This video contains accident scene footage which may upset some viewers. Viewer discretion is advised. The ATSB's investigation into a triple fatal accident involving a Gulfstream 695A Hotel Papa Yankee found a known pressurisation system defect contributed to the pilot almost certainly being hypoxic when the fire surveillance aircraft departed controlled flight near Cloncurry in northwest Queensland. Shortly before 11am on the 4th of November 2023, the twin turboprop operated by Ag Air departed from Toowoomba, Queensland for Mount Isa in the state's northwest with a pilot and two camera operators on board to conduct line scanning of fire zones. After departure, the aircraft climbed to then cruised to 28,000 feet. About 40 minutes into the flight, the pilot contacted air traffic control and requested to descend to 15,000 feet, levelling off about 10 minutes later. Shortly after, the pilot again contacted ATC, requesting to climb back to 28,000 feet. Almost two hours into the flight, ATC lost radio contact with the pilot. Over the following 30 minutes, ATC made multiple attempts to re-establish contact, including the use of alternate frequencies and relaying messages via a military aircraft in the vicinity. ATC eventually contacted the pilot on their mobile phone. During a brief conversation, the controller noted the pilot's speech was slow and flat. ATSB Chief Commissioner Angus Mitchell said as a result, ATC upgraded the aircraft's status to an alert phase and initiated their hypoxic pilot emergency procedures. Once the alert phase was initiated, ATC then phoned the operator to raise concerns specifically about hypoxia. Now, it was during this conversation, information regarding the known defects with the aircraft's pressurisation system weren't passed on. And this was at a time when further intervention by ATC could have directed the pilot to descend to a safe altitude. ATC re-established direct radio contact about 10 minutes after this phone conversation, at which time the pilot stated that operations were normal. On receipt of advice from the pilot that the oxygen system was operating normally and with no knowledge of the aircraft's defect, ATC vigilance regarding hypoxia was likely reduced. The ATSB found that the ATC hypoxic pilot emergency checklist had no guidance on ceasing the emergency response. Air services committed to undertaking a review of the checklist. As the aircraft neared Cloncurry, investigators determined the power levers for both the aircraft's engines were probably reduced, resulting in the airspeed progressively decreasing and ultimately leading to the aircraft departing controlled flight from 28,000 feet. Recorded data showed that the aircraft initially entered a descending left turn with an increasing rate of descent. During its descent, the aircraft likely transitioned into an aerodynamic spin with an average rate of descent of about 13,500 feet per minute. The aircraft collided with the ground about 55 kilometres southeast of Cloncurry. Tragically, the pilot and the two camera operators on board were fatally injured. The onset of altitude hypoxia during the flight significantly degraded the pilot's ability to safely operate an aircraft, and it is possible that the pilot also experienced some loss of consciousness during the flight. Hypoxia occurs when not enough oxygen is supplied to the blood, tissues and cells for the body to properly function. Altitude hypoxia can occur when a person is exposed to high altitudes, typically above 10,000 feet. Those on board were exposed to altitude hypoxia due to the known defect in the aircraft's pressurisation system. This meant that the pressure they were feeling was equivalent to that experienced at about 19,000 feet. Now that's almost double the height that hypoxia is known to become an issue. The operator was aware of the defect. However, it wasn't formally recorded, it wasn't communicated to the external safety manager, and there was no risk assessed procedure on how to manage it. This meant through a combination of inaction, encouragement, and in some instances, direct involvement, they had allowed the aircraft to continue flying operations at an excessive cabin altitude. 
Internal correspondence and historical flight data showed evidence of a normalised practice of operating the aircraft at a hazardous cabin altitude, managing the effects of hypoxia by undertaking short descents to lower altitudes and by using the aircraft's emergency oxygen system. This was a tragic and very preventable accident that highlights not only the dangers of knowingly circumventing critical safety defences, but also the insidious and the deadly effects of hypoxia. A life support system like emergency oxygen is essentially a final line of defence against hypoxia. Its use should never be considered a standard operating procedure. You can read the final report by searching AO-2023-053 on our website from the link in the description or via the link in our bio.